Our very active weather pattern is continuing over the next several days as we've got multiple storm systems crossing the country. But in about a week, things are about to change drastically with a lot of cool air taking over and much as the eastern United States. In this video, we'll take a look at thunderstorms on the way, but we'll also take a look at that mid to late March freeze and the potential for snow. All that right here. Many of the maps on your screen throughout this video are from Weatherbell, so please check out the trial link in the description to get those maps. Alright, taking a look at your 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. This goes from March 17th through 21st. Look at that. Looking cooler than average over a lot of the south, central, and southeastern parts of the United States. That's only set to intensify as we go down through that late March pattern, especially here. And let's kind of time it out. You can see as we go towards the end of this week, we've got a lot of cool air, 5, 10, 15 degrees below average locked up there in the west. Much warmer than average over the central and eastern United States. But by the time we go towards, say, our Saturday, towards our Sunday, so this is March 16th into our 17th, I think it's really at this point when the cooler air that's been locked up in the west as well as some from the polar jet stream really begins to slide through the central United States with some form of storm system there to end the weekend. Um, whether that's going to be something that kind of moves out of the Gulf Coast or comes along the polar jet stream, that's to be determined. But it looks like by the time we go towards our Tuesday, March 19th, it's going to be about 15 to 25 degrees below average in some parts of the southeastern United States. A pretty legit cold snap there. And you can see as we take a look at the mid to upper level jet streams here using that European model, this is the same model just showing that cold snap. We're also seeing this on other models as well so this isn't just completely out of the blue look at that you can see troughing in the east as we've got that polar jet stream those reds really dipping on down there as we head towards monday march 18th bringing that cooler air and those anomalies on down through the eastern u.s and that looks to at least linger around there as you can see that troughing in the east and really some ridging in the west actually warming things up above average over there at that point so that's why it looks as we go towards the 8 to 14 day range at least a little bit below average over a lot of the upper midwest as well as, as parts of the southeast as that polar jet stream dives on down um, as you can see over the west with that ridging returning a little bit warmer than average. Use the timestamps to skip ahead to exactly when I go back to talking about that long range pattern, but for now let's talk about an upcoming storm system for this week bringing some showers and storm. As we go towards our Thursday, we've got this big system here, March 14th, a lot of rainfall over the central U.S., the upper Midwest, um, and, and some thunderstorms that are going to be moving out of eastern Oklahoma, eastern Texas, and notice those moving east into the Arklatex um, at Thursday night going into our Friday morning. Some of those have the potential to be severe, especially in that area that I just circled on your screen, so make sure your weather aware and we'll talk a little bit more about the severe weather in just a minute but it definitely looks rainy along the warm frontal end of this on up there through the midwest over to the ohio valley some thunder possible thursday night and into a friday in that region as well Towards our Friday, if we get any severe weather, it would probably be closer to the Gulf Coast or Southeast as we've got rain over a lot of the East and Gulf Coast regions. But notice here as we head towards Sunday at 8 p.m., this is March 17th, right when that cooler air is going to try and begin to spill on in. Notice we've got some sort of system trying to move out of the Gulf Coast, connect with a little bit of some of that clipper snow falling up there in the Great Lakes region. Again, that's kind of TBD how that system sets on up, but that's going to be the one that brings that cooler air in. Now, here we go, Tuesday night into Wednesday, watching a little bit of the of severe weather risk, especially over Southwest Missouri and Eastern Kansas. Kansas, northeast Oklahoma there. This is just a marginal risk level 1 of 5 by the Storm Prediction Center Tuesday night and into Wednesday for hail. Maybe some gusty winds over that region there at that point. As we go towards our Wednesday late day, there you can see southerly flow out ahead of our cold front and dry line there. Really in that warm sector of that storm system, maybe a low end marginal risk there. But as we go towards our Thursday and Thursday night, look at this. This is when storms really turn robust there over parts of the Arklatex region there. So Thursday at 8 p.m. really looking strong um, with large hail and gusty winds being the primary threats, um, maybe some tornadoes not being able to be ruled on out, but just notice how big this warm sector is. Also some very heavy thunderstorms along that warm front up there Thursday night and into Friday into parts of Illinois, Indiana, though many of those are probably going to be on the sub-severe side. You can see those thunderstorms move closer to the Gulf Coast as we go through the day on Friday. Now here's my O&W severe scale. It goes from zero all the way to seven. This is just my personal projection for your severe weather risk in your area, and I've got parts of far eastern Kansas and west central parts of Missouri on Tuesday. Tuesday and Tuesday night here, so tomorrow and tomorrow night level 2 of 7, that means increased risk for especially wind and hail threats there. The same goes for Wednesday over parts of northeast Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, southeast Nebraska, southwest Iowa, and northwestern parts of Missouri there. Um, but all the way down the dry line through parts of central Texas wouldn't rule out in that Edwards Plateau region. A little bit of severe weather. Again, mainly wind and hail threats as we go Wednesday and Wednesday night, it looks like, with that threat there. Then as we go in towards our Thursday and Thursday night, I've got that 2 and a 3 there in the parts of eastern Texas and Oklahoma, really around that Arklatex region. That's where I've got the 3. That means there's 
there's an increased risk. In fact, the potential for maybe some hatch zones to develop from the Storm Prediction Center, pretty much telling you there that we could see some extremely large hail in a few spots, maybe some really damaging winds in a few spots out of those clusters, maybe even some tornadoes if we get the right environment. This doesn't look like a huge tornado setup, but nonetheless, even as we continue in towards our Friday and Friday night, I'm still expecting a little focal region for severe weather down there over parts of the South Central Lower Mississippi Valley region. Now, out of all this rainfall and out of all the storm activity that we're going to get, this is as we go through Sunday morning, so not including that next storm system that could bring in the cooler air. With that low that sets up over the central U.S. and the warm front going all the way to southern Michigan, a lot of rain, but especially on down there through southeastern Oklahoma, northeast Texas, southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and western Mississippi. That's where locally probably some three to six inch rainfall totals will occur, but a lot of the mid-south picking up on some heavy rain, and really if you're in any of these blue colors, mostly within this box here that I'm um, kind of boxing in on your screen right now, definitely be prepared for some heavier bouts of rain out of this particular system, and especially in those yellow and red colors, a flood threat likely to develop. Now, as we take a look at high temperatures through this week, notice it's all warmth for now. 70s over a lot of the eastern United States. All the way on up there into parts of the upper Midwest, parts of Northeast Iowa, Eastern Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan pushing those 70s and nearing record highs as we go towards our Tuesday afternoon there. Of course, it's in the 70s over a lot of the South Central, and the warmth only intensifies with 80s into the Arklatex Wednesday ahead of that front and the dry line. We've got 70s on up into the Midwest, Ohio Valley, upper 70s through Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina on Wednesday. Look at this as we go towards our Thursday. There you can see our cold front now beginning to move through parts of the Central Plains out of this current system. You know, this isn't a big cold front or anything, but you can definitely see that contrast with some of those 40s and 50s in the northern and more seasonable for this time of the year, honestly, there. Um, but you can see, look at this, 80s through a lot of South Texas, the Gulf Coast, and Southeast here, even into parts of the Georgia and the Carolinas, some 80s closer to the coast on Thursday and into our Friday. Then as we go towards our Saturday, it's going to be mostly the um, kind of warmest there in the parts of the Southeast. Then as we head towards the 17th, the 18th, that's when we're going to really begin to notice that cooler air start to filter into the east. Look at that. Daytime time highs closer to the freezing mark on up there over a lot of the upper Midwest. So we're actually going to start to go a little bit below average over a lot of the country. And let's kind of get back to talking about that with our future radar from the European model that we saw about a day ago. Now, this is a slightly older run. And I use it to kind of show you how it set up that system that we could potentially see and are likely to see at some point here around the 16th through the 17th to the 18th time frame. And I know that's kind of broad. It looks like that's when it's going to begin to form down here with the remnants of our most recent system still lingering around the Gulf Coast bringing thunderstorms. We're going to watch a little bit of that cooler air bank on up against it there into West Texas and Oklahoma. Could that bring a little bit of snowfall there if the system looks like this? Certainly so. And in fact, if the system looks like this, European model bringing a big swath of heavy snow falling up there over Ohio, Pennsylvania, and that's one pocket, another one on up there closer to Boston. Now, keep in mind that this run has already expired. We've seen new ones come out since then, and it hasn't looked like this. I'm just showing you that we still have the potential out of some runs here and some of these, you know, more deterministic model runs. Um, with that troughing building into the east, the system that could bring that troughing, if the cool air catches up fast enough, some snow on the backside, certainly not out of the question. The GFS also shows a similar situation. Here we go. System starts on the 18th. And then as we go in towards the 19th and 20th, that's when it would really be intensifying. Again, and look at that in the mid-Atlantic. This is a recent GFS run here showing parts of Virginia, um, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, the southern New England region getting in on some snowfall as that system moves through. And then again, the troughing in the east um, kind of really lingering behind that. But again, trust these models with a grain of salt at this point. But our surface temperatures, this is what I really want you to focus on because the cool down is what's more set in stone at this point, not exactly what comes with the system bringing it. Look at that by the time we go towards Tuesday, March 19th at 8 a.m., any of those reddish colors is where you're getting down into the 20s or a little bit below, especially over the upper Midwest up there. Um, but even in the southeastern United States, this is as we head towards Wednesday, March 20th at 8 a.m. Again, it's probably not going to be exactly like this, but a lot of 20s on up there and some teens over the upper Midwest. And you got to believe with winds wrapping back around our most recent system, it's going to feel even cooler than that. Look at this. Um, let's zoom in on the east here, in fact. As we go towards our Thursday, March 21st at 8 a.m., we've seen many of these signals on the models. 20s and 30s dipping all the way on down through South Alabama, parts of South Georgia, the Carolina coastline. I mean, it's even cooler the further north you go. So this definitely looks like a pretty decent cold blast moving through. How long could it last? You know, the European ensemble showing, and this is a collection of a bunch of models, showing that cooler are kind of withering away with time as we head towards March 21st through the 22nd. But overall, a little bit cooler than average over even the western U.S., so that rich that's briefly there fades at that point, the 24th, the 25th, and you know, you're getting into very far distant territory at this point. 
But if this cool air lasts like these models and ensembles are showing, even towards the very end of March, we could see a, a pretty extended freeze for a lot of parts of the country. So if you want to stick with me through all weather events throughout the rest of this year and beyond, um, please hit that subscribe button for consistent, accurate, easy to understand videos. Um, that's what we do right here at One Nation Weather. We're at 3,051 subscribers right now. Um, please help me get towards that next 4,000 subscriber goal. Weather Web Maps link in the description. That's it for this 10-minute video.